Hello, so this video is about loving yourself. Many of us believe we already do. Our actions say otherwise, though. So much popular self-help advice suggests that we must learn to love ourselves. It's good advice, but how exactly do we do it? It's not so simple. We often believe that we do love ourselves, and yet our actions and reactions in our lives suggest otherwise. Yet loving yourself is essential to your personal growth. To the fulfillment of your dreams and to developing healthy, happy relationships with others. Instead of trying to talk yourself into believing you have self-love, foster compassion for yourself. The negativity bias. The negativity bias is the phenomenon that if there are two equally charged stimuli, the negative one will attract more of your mind's attention. The funny thing is about the negativity bias is that any that from an evolutionary perspective it was a huge competitive advantage attentional filtering in any given moment you are bombarded with more stimuli than your mind can actively process in order to function in an environment that is sub saturated with data your mind filters out most, almost all of the information around you. This is called a detentional filtering. A side effect of intentional filtering is that the world ends up looking like whatever it is you're focused on. For example, as you read this sentence, you are not actively paying attention to how your toes feel in your socks. However, now that your attention has been called to your toes, you notice them. That's the intentional filter in action. The combined effect and the media. Minds are not very good at processing reality. First, your mind is much more likely to pay attention to what's wrong than what's right, which is the negativity bias. Second, your mind is more focused to filter out almost all of the stimuli in any given situation, attentional filters. Because of this, your mind has a tendency to view you as being far less intelligent, capable, good looking, charming, and ultimately worthy of love than you actually are. This is further exasperated by a media culture that preys on fear and an advertising culture that strives to make you feel less small unless you're up to date with all the latest trends. Simply put, if you're having trouble loving yourself, there's nothing wrong with you. It's a side effect of modernity. Fortunately, loving yourself is a skill that can be learned and mastered. You are the singular most important person in the world. Everything in your life flows from your relationship to yourself. Learn to treat yourself with, like someone worthy of love, respect, and compassion, and your life will flow more effortlessly, abundantly, and joyfully than you could imagine. Treat yourself like someone worthy of cont a contempt, disdain, and indifference. And each day you will, will be a struggle to keep your head up above water. The unfortunate part is that most people never put any much energy into their relationship with themselves. They drift through life acting as their own worst critic, working to inhibit their potential and keeping their he hearts and minds guarded. I spent years of my life quiet, uh, quietly but cleverly telling myself I'm not worthy. I obsessed over mistakes from my past. I endlessly replayed embarrassing moments while somehow neglecting the beautiful ones. I fail to forgive myself for being a human. Care as much about yourself as you do for others. It sounds simple, but many of us simply don't do this because we think we are being selfish or that our own needs are not important. They are. It is not selfish to care about yourself. Compassion for yourself means showing concern for your own feelings as well as for others. Treat yourself the way you would want to treat your children or your best friend, with gentleness, concern, and caring. Maintain boundaries. Write a list of things that you need emotionally, things that are important to you and that upset you, 
or hurt your feelings when they are ignored or violated. They could include being listened to, getting sympathy when you're hurt, being celebrated when you succeed, receiving love and tenderness without asking for it, being cared for, and knowing you can rely on someone. Whatever is important to you is important. And when someone ignores what's important to you or crosses your boundary, you'll know because it hurts. Don't ignore that. Your feelings are there to tell you what's right and what's wrong. Let people know what your boundaries are and what you will and will not tolerate. If you apologize, you can forgive them. If they apologize, you can forgive them. If they do not or continue to ignore your boundaries and needs, you need to create consequences. Do what you need to do to be you. First, figure out what makes you feel good. It doesn't matter what it is, but become aware of how you feel when you do things. Do you feel exhausted at work but exhilarated when you're in your garden? Do you feel joyful reading your, to your children? Fulfilled when you are writing poetry or volunteering? Find out what makes you feel good and do it as often as you can. Feeling good is all the permission you need to do what you love to do. And the more you do those things, the happier you will be. If it means you have to give up something else, so be it. Perhaps you need to spend more time on your own or schedule an hour every weekend to visit an art gallery to recharge. Maybe you need to save up some money to buy paints and brushes or ask your family to look after themselves for a few hours while you take a stress relieving walk. So. This is um, 30 ways to practice self-love. So one, stop comparing yourself to others. People achieve success and failure at different rates. Two, you're not as fat as you think. Besides, your body fat percentage has no bearing on what makes you a quality human being. Three, exercise because it is good for your soul and not solely for the outward experience. Appreciate your body and all the things it can do. Stop picking it apart. You will never achieve perfection. Four. Find something at which you excel. Maybe you were really good at working with kids and you just don't know it yet. Five, spend time with your girlfriends or guy friends. Relationships may come and go, but friends are forever. Cherish that. Six, spend time alone. It's okay if you want to stay home on a Friday night, catch up on your DVR and cat fro-yo because you've had an exhausting work week. Seven, read that book that you've been mis meaning to read. In fact, read as many books as possible. Reading expands the imagination and sharpens the mind. Eight, spend time outside discovering a new trail or a mountain to hike, soak up the sun. Nine, take a lot of pictures, take way too many, and don't forget to print them. Don't let them just sit in your phone memory. Ten, let go of the past, forgive the people who hurt you so that you can move on. Curing your own anger only poisons you. Eleven, reunite with old friends from high school, college, or your past in general. Let go of friendships that no longer serve you. People grow apart. It's natural and it's okay. Twelve, call your friends and family more often. Don't just follow them on social media. Remember when you used to have to call and meet up with people to hear their voices? That experience is so much richer. Thirteen, resolve the issues that you might have with your family. Tell them you love them. Show up to a family event and don't have something better to do. 14. Take vitamins because you want to be the healthiest version of yourself. Unless you want to be cranky and lethargic all day, make sure you get enough iron. 15. Treat yourself to something you want but don't need. Whether it's a fancy designer purse you've been eyeing for years or a plane ticket to a destination of your dreams. Remember how fine the line between saying and living is. Tell it. 16. Care about your appearance, not in a vain way, vain superficial way. Care about how you look so you can feel great when you leave the house. 17. Watch that movie or that Netflix series you've been meaning to see. 18. Be active. Exercising regularly releases endorphins and contributes to your level of happiness and will make you feel better about yourself. 19. Pick up a hobby. 20. Save up money and travel somewhere new. Twenty-one, 
laugh at yourself. If you trip over your feet and realize your shirt is on inside out, don't worry about it. Make a joke. 22, do karaoke. Do it sober. Do it drunk. Sing. I read somewhere that the more you sing, the happier and healthier you it will make you. 23, eat less processed foods. If you actually knew what was in that shit, you would be disgusted. Watch the documentary Food, Inc. But if you want to have fries with extra, extra ranch, sometimes do it. 24, dance. Freak dance, weird dance. Make up a dance routine with your friends like you did when you were 12. Stop caring about what you look like. Have fun. 25, smile more. The more you smile, the happier you will feel. It what makes others happier too. Trust me. 26, do favors and don't expect anything in return from the kindness of your heart. 27, guard your heart, but be open. Don't let people take advantage of you. 28, be less judgmental, be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. 29, look up at the sky, realize that sunsets are gorgeous, look at the stars as they're pretty incredible too. 30, you will never be able to please everyone. Not everyone will like you. You won't like everyone you meet. That's perfectly fine also. So that's the 30 tips. And then all of these things will help you to develop a sense of accomplishment, a sense of pride in what you are doing and who you are, and a realization that you are a worthy, talented, capable, lovable person who deserves to be loved. And the most important person to believe that is you.